step one, we're going to remove the top, then we're going to put a hole in this thing, and we're going to put a pressure relief valve. I'll show you how that works. Let me get set up, and we'll be right back. So how are we going to put a pressure relief valve in here so that we can fill this up carefully and slowly and not overfill the tank or have the stuff boil back into our face? I'm using, and I have no idea, a towel Tazon or something like that. And it says gas can. It's a, a new upgrade. It's a six-pack. comes from uh, Amazon. And tells you how to install it. And I'm just going to talk you through it right now. We're going to bore our hole. Let me turn this so I can make sure we're seeing everything. We're going to bore the hole where we want to put our pressure relief valve. Which this is a pressure relief valve right there. Okay, we're going to bore the hole where we want it. It does come with a drill, it also comes with a little wrench. We'll bore the hole and we're going to feed this big wire down through the top of the tank here and out that hole. So we may have to bend this wire in order to fish it back up, but I am super good at fishing, so that is not a problem. They recommend that you put it on the outside here, and I'm not going to put it there because I'm concerned I would get it broke off from rough handling. There's not really a good smooth place to put it, so I'm going to put it like right up here. So I'll have to run the wire down through here, then up through this. And let me show you this real quick. I'm going to do some of this off camera. It has a cap. It has a little nut which will tighten up. It's got a plate that's going to push down. Then it has two O-rings and then this piece right here. This will be pulled through the tank and up using the wire. Once it has been pulled up and out, these pieces right here the O-ring, the clamp, and the nut have already been threaded onto the wire. And we now push the O-ring down, we push this down, we screw this down, and then carefully holding this, we tighten that up with the little wrench, and then life is good. Something to be aware of. This gasoline is under pressure. You saw me just fill it up, and you saw a little bit of it spew out, you saw you probably could hear the pressure releasing and everything. And so we're going to take the cap off of this before we do anything so that we do not get or risk a spark. Some of these have a spark in the back of them. And if you drill in under pressure, that would be enough to release pressure onto this. And you could initially get a fire. And we don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to do some of this off camera and then I'll come back. These new ones have a plastic filter inside. It's a little bit difficult to grab to pull out. I'm grabbing and pulling in and lifting up, trying to get it to disconnect. Not having a lot of success. I'm going to go get a screwdriver so I can work it out. This would be a lot easier if I had somebody to hold this bottle while I'm pulling up. This is also atraumatic. It means it has no teeth on it. So getting a bite is very difficult. All right, that is now out. What I'll do next is I will bend this wire to feed down through this hole and come up to where I'm going to drill so I can put this in. This drill has made a really nasty hole. I've got to go get, ah, I have to go get a razor knife to clean all that off so that I can get a good seal. So let me go get the razor knife, I'll clean that off, and then we'll come back and we'll make this happen. 
I've determined that this will give me a good chance to pull this wire out. So what I'll do is I'll now feed it into the bottle. And I will now work to bring it up into this. I'm going to do that off camera because it may take a minute. And on top of that, I forgot to put all my stuff on here and I need to do that. First thing that goes on there is the nut because that's the last thing that hits. After the nut goes the metal compression ring. There's the metal compression ring and then the O-ring, which is the way it should have gone in the first place. Now we fit this on, we give it a decent bend to hang on to it, and now we pull it back through. We pull this up, and there's our piece, and now with a little luck, we get it out. You can see it's out here. The next thing we do is we get it straightened on there so the O-ring will seat properly. We push this O-ring down. We put down the metal seal. We get the nut to come back to us. Here comes the nut coming back to us. I'm pulling up pretty hard, so I'm using a little stiffer wire. It comes with some wire that's in here. I just don't feel like it's stiff enough for me, able, me to be able to hang on to this and tighten it. And I am willing to thread that back across and cut the end of it off in order just to hold on to this more securely. Uh, the O-ring has stretched. Let's get the O-ring back against it properly. O-ring is in place. We crank this down. Keep it from moving. So we're just compressing the O-ring. I doubt that I can hold this with that, but I'm going to try. Just like I say, there's no teeth on it. There's some movement in this. I'm going to get a pair of pliers so I can hang on to it and tighten it the rest of the way off camera. There we go, nice and tight, so that we don't damage the tank pulling the wire out because it's so stiff, which is what I wanted. We take this back in. Put the end of it off. Pull this out. Cap it. 
are good. We now have a pressure relief. <coughs> if you notice, this has little wings. That's what was keeping it from coming out. Put this back in. Screw this back on. Check the O-ring. Make sure the O-ring's good. Put this on. We can now pour the fuel out by loosening the cap so that we have airflow and it's not just going to surge out and there's not going to be some kind of pressure buildup where it boils and splashes back in your face. Hope this helps dysfunctional vet out.